Hey, I wanted to tell everybody that I'm working very hard on the fourth edition of Uncovering Missing Secrets of Magnetism. I've actually had some uh, heavyweight hitters, uh, both in the United States and Europe, uh, contact me about the third edition. that has been out there now for years, um, as is the case defining the uh, spatial counterspatial geometry of magnetic reciprocation, that which defines 100% of the visible universe, was my discovery. I also discovered the formula for uh, divergent magnetic reciprocation, which defines the hyperboloid and the toroidal uh, divergent uh, geometry of that. And uh, here it is. That's one of the formulas for it. Um, it has since been proven uh, irrefutable, uh, both in the observation and uh, otherwise. The uh, Gaussian geometry that defines a divergent uh, hyperboloid that makes up the, uh, the uh, as what Faraday called uh, the loss of inertia. He referred to uh, magnetism as the dielectric field, which is exactly what it is. We see a uh, hypertrochoidal pattern. Well, however, what defines the spatial counterspatial geometry of magnetism, and this is something that you won't see until this video, and uh, one of the many aspects that make up the fourth edition, and there certainly will be will be up to six editions of the book because there's just so much stuff to add, is that uh, the reciprocating precessional hyperboloid is, of course, we here we see the black center of uh, either pole of a magnet. I don't know if this is a south pole or a north pole. Here we see either side of the pole of the magnet, and here we see the dielectric inertial plane looking edge on. Of course, this is strictly a two-dimensional view, however, holding the ferro cell itself. Now, I made this discovery ever before finding out about the invention of the ferro cell, which was invented in 2007 by Tim Vandarelli that this must necessitatively be the geometry that makes up magnetic reciprocation. Now let's take a quick two-dimensional model of a top-down look of the polarity of a magnet and here we can see that we're looking at the hypertrochoidal pattern. You will say, well, it's a hypertrochoid. It's like, well, do you know what a spirograph pattern is? It's like, well, yes, I certainly do. What do you mean by reciprocating precessional hyperboloid? Well, that precession actually occurs at a specific frequency, and it varies depends upon it, depending upon the power applied, but the magnetic precession is 42.493 megahertz Tesla that makes up the processing, uh, uh, the processing uh, loss of inertia which reciprocates from uh, one uh, divergent uh, pole to the other. However, polarity requires an entirely different set of videos to de define that. Polarity is nothing other than spatial divergence, and the opposite of that, of course, is counterspace. Now, how do we define what magnetism is? And here is where you'll find something very, very interesting. So if you bear with me just for a few seconds, I will tell you what is going on. Now, I've already said in the third edition, defined the fact that uh, magnetism makes up uh, the hyperboloid. Now, this is a hyperboloidal formation. It is divergent reciprocating precessional magnetism due to the loss of inertia, as necessitated by the formula 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3. But what does that mean? Well, obviously, if the counterspatial formation that makes up inertia is the hyperboloid, then what makes up the spatial component? We're talking a positive image versus a negative image, but the two must both be one and the same thing. And this is going to be so very simple, I will show you in a second, you will have an aha moment of realization. And this is one of the many things I'll be talking about in the fourth edition in the book. Well, how do we tie in a hyperboloid, which is this formation. This is actually technically the hyperboloid. Here we have a null point, and here we have divergent magnetism. Well, let's first take a look at, now this is a, a cross section. Of course, yes, this is a hand drawing that I did, obviously. This is a toroidal formation, but this makes up the totality of uh, the loss of inertia. Now, of course, magnetism is what holds up 100% of the visible universe. It defines uh, it defines uh, what is the uh, wake of that loss of inertia, which is the creation of space. Now, space is not a thing in and of itself. It is only the posterior attribute of the loss of inertia due to the divergent reciprocating processional hyperboloid which defines magnetic reciprocation. But how do we interweave 
the spatial phenomena that we know as magnetism, i.e. a sphere, and of course it is a mathematical certainty, as has been proven by computers, that the inverse of a hyperboloid, which is this formation right here, basically an hourglass formation, the inverse of a hyperboloid is a sphere. So if you actually were to take a sphere and turn it inside out mathematically, you would end up with a hyperboloid. So a sphere defining space and divergence, what would define counter space and convergence? And here we have the hyperboloid. So how do we tie the two together and take a genuine uh, look at what defines counter space and space, i.e. dielectricity and magnetism. Well, we have one single formation. We have the toroid here, and we have the hyperboloid right here, both defining two different uh, uh, geometry. Now, this is non-Euclidean geometry. However, Euclid himself makes reference to counter space, although in an obtuse manner, but so does Plato, and specifically Plotinus and Proclus. So even the ancient Greeks knew about this. It was the negative space from which everything that we know as having a spatial attribute is manifest. I mean, this very principle is as ancient as uh, time itself, or when humans first were able to think. So looking at this formation, what we have is a hypertrochoid, we have the hyperboloid that defines the counterspatial center. If we think of a donut, obviously, hopefully you know what a toroid is. A toroid is a donut shape. Well, what would it be the case if we were to imagine the negative image of the toroid? And well, it would be the central formation right here, which is the hyperboloid. That is the hyperboloid that defines magnetism. Now looking top down doesn't matter. This is of course a real image. This is not a computer projection. You can see the hand behind the ferro cell holding the magnet. We ha holding the magnet we have the hypertrochoidal formation that defines the loss of inertia and here you can see a top down view of that toroid. And as is always the case we have the black spot in the center which defines counter space. That is the counter spatial Counterspatial center from which inertia is lost, and the outer ring of which defines magnetism. Now here's the either side of a magnet. You have one pole here, one pole here, but if we were to take a look at uh, one of the poles of the magnet, as I turn the, uh, the, uh, the magnetic pole directly in face of uh, the ferro cell, you see it right here. We have the hypertrochoidal formation, and if you were able to extrapolate this out in full dimensional view, this actually does have about four inches of holographic depth if you're holding it in your hand. You would see the toroid, but the inverse of the toroid is the hyperboloid. That is the centermost portion which makes up the inertia. Inertia is right here and magnetism is out here. These are the divergent lines where we, we're in which um, uh, the light appears as it's shot from the LEDs inwards towards uh, the face of the uh, coherent uh, magnetic pole. Now what defines a magnet specifically is uh, attributional. It is uh, strictly speaking no different than speaking about coherent light versus co incoherent light. A magnet is nothing other than a line domains where by which we might say that the magnet operates at a macro scale like, a, like an atom does. It is uh, nothing other than a coherent magnetic polarization. Um, the only thing that defines a pre-magnet versus a post-magnet of course is that uh, coherent polarization. So what can we say about what defines magnetism? What do we understand about what defines the uh, spatio counterspatial geometry of magnetism? Since we have the hypertrochoid here and we have the toroid obviously making up the spatial attribute of the divergent uh, reciprocating processional hyperboloid which is defining counter space here, i.e. inertia, and the loss of that inertia which defines the spatial component, i.e. the divergent reciprocating magnetism, which also processes. Processes like a top, as necessitatively must be so. However, defining that would take about an hour or more to explain, and I might bore you to death. Now, this is actually incorrect here. Obviously, the straight lines of this reciprocation on this toroid are incorrect because Mother Nature does not have straight lines. But here you see, unfortunately, this is also a one-way flow. In the case of the inertia, it is actually flowing both ways at the same time where in which you would actually get the uh, hypertrochoidal formation like this. So this is only 
only about 40% right, but you, if you don't know what a toroid is, this is the toroidal formation, but the hyperboloidal center, the negative image, if you will, that defines uh, the toroid is the hyperboloid, and the hyperboloid is the counterspatial geometry of the non-Euclidean uh, nature which makes up inertia, i.e. dielectricity, and the loss of that inertia, of course, is what gives a spatial definition both to every atom and 100 percent of the visible universe itself. But we have to understand what these spatial counterspatial geometries are. Since we know that the inverse sphere, if you were to take a sphere and uh, completely invert it, you will end up with this, the hyperboloid. Okay, this is the hyperboloid. Now everything works on Gaussian flux density, and of course this is all simplex pressure mediation. The hyperboloid can and does fluctuate as far as its constrictor goes, depending on uh, the intensity of the field applied or the coherency that exists there. This exists within Mother Nature at the macro scale and the micro scale ad infinitum. Here we see uh, the same thing. You're even able to see the books propping up the magnet behind the ferrocell. Right now we're looking at either side of a pole of a magnet, so we're looking along the dielectric inertial plane. You'll notice that either pole of this magnet is, of course, uh, depressed like a bowl formation. Now, a lot of people say, well, that looks like a black hole. It doesn't matter what, what you want to define it as, but the actual uh, non-Euclidean uh, inertial geometry that exists between this toroidal divergence is a hyperboloid. It is irrefutable. It is no different than saying pulling the plug on the drain of your bathtub, water will flow down in a vortexual formation. It is irrefutable and undeniable that uh, both my discovery and uh, the four formulas that I have discovered is the explanation, the definition, the denotation of what defines magnetism. Both the geometry and counterspatial geometry, the divergent reciprocating processional hyperboloid that defines magnetism is irrefutable. There is nobody on this earth that can deny it. They can chirp as much as they like, but it is without refutation. Here is a more accurate view of the toroid of the divergent. Of course, here we have in the center that defines the uh, negative image, if you will, analogously, defines the, uh, the toroid. And of course, as is the case with all branches of physics and metaphysics, we have a positive that defines a negative and the negative that defines a positive. What gives definition to the toroid is the negative image here, which is the hyperboloid. This central portion right here, which is demarcated in this hourglass formation. So when we think of a donut shape or a toroid, we obviously have that picture in our mind. But what gives definition to that spatial denotation of a toroid is the counterspatial inertial uh, hypergeometry, which technically is a term, by the way. The hypergeometry, which is the non-Euclidean inertial, non-spatial component, which gives definition to the toroid, which is the hyperboloid. This is irrefutable, it is undeniable, it is simplex pressure dynamic mediation in its most absolute sense. And there is no higher absolute in referring to this because it is the most fundamental nature of the universe, and that is magnetism because it is what gives definition to 100% of spatial volume that we see, feel, and touch, witness across the galaxies and beyond. This is likewise seen in accretion disk formations, seen in galactic jets, seen in spiral galaxies. Uh, from macro to micro, everything is self-similar. It is all simplex fractal pressure dynamic pressure dynamic mediation, but understanding the spatial counterspatial geometry that defines magnetism is somewhat obtuse, and most human beings are certainly not inclined to think in those sort of terms. Here we have another hyperboloid, and uh, obviously the divergent reciprocating magnetism that also processes at a frequency that defines the uh, toroid. So the ultimate point of this is, is that the toroid and the hyperboloid are both one and the same thing. You know, you got one side of the coin and then the other side of the coin, but they're both the coin. They're both one and the same thing. One is the hypergeometry and the other one is the spatial geometry. It is so simple. Mother Nature is so simple. She does not do math. She's not a cross-eyed crack whore with a bag full of magic particles. The universe is far, far, far more simple 
than uh, your quantum physics class would ever have you believe. Simplicity is divinity. The simplicity of the universe is irreducible. And it is divine. And it is divinely simple. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Bye.